The sandbag to shoulder is more than just a simple exercise. It's a sport, a skill, like the snatch for a weightlifter or the deadlift for a powerlifter. The sandbag to shoulder is the driving force behind all heavy sandbag lifting. It gives your training purpose. Working with it makes you strong in every sense of the word and builds muscle like a wrestler or a strongman. There are many different techniques you can use to shoulder a sandbag, and they all work, but today I'd like to take a closer look at my preferred technique and discuss why I think it may be the ultimate blend of all lifting styles, bringing together the best parts of each variation. Before going any further, I'd like to give credit where it's due. I first saw this lifting method used by the modern stone lifting legend Andy Crawford. I highly recommend you look him up if you haven't already. Moving on, when you see this video, what comes to mind? In my experience, there are three different responses to this. One, you're unfamiliar with heavy lifting in general, and you cringe at the thought of the back destruction the exercise must cause. Two, you are familiar with heavy lifting, but haven't done much, if any, odd object lifting. Your thoughts probably center around that underhand arm position and a fear of snapping a bicep tendon. Three, your thought is simply, okay, this is pretty cool. You've either lifted sandbags before, or maybe you just haven't accepted the general consensus that the human body is this fragile thing ready to break at all times. Let me just briefly address each of these. 1. The back. While this usually ends up being less of a concern for seasoned lifters, as the back is incredibly adaptable and will likely become the strongest part of your body quickly, the fear is not unfounded. You can get into trouble if you're not prepared. To keep your back safe when shouldering a sandbag, my recommendation is to focus most of your attention at all times on breathing and bracing. Proper bracing protects your spine and will also make you significantly stronger. Before every step of the movement, every transition along the way, you must take a deep Deep breath, as deep as you're able, and brace your stomach hard. This is known as the Valsalva Maneuver, and it's the foundation of all heavy lifting. 2. The Biceps this technique does require you to catch a sandbag with a bent arm underhand grip position. That's the part that scares people, and rightly so. The risk of bicep injury when lifting heavy will always be there, but I don't believe it's actually much of an issue when using this sandbag to shoulder technique. I considered many different arguments for why this is. I could talk about absolute load and how sandbags are self-limiting in the best kind of way, forcing the entire body to get strong, preventing any one specific area from becoming overburdened. I considered mentioning arm wrestlers and levers, detailing the insane amounts of force arm wrestlers can handle going through their upper arms, and how that force is magnified because the weight an arm wrestler fights against is in their hand, which is as far away from the elbow joint as you can get, increasing the lever and making the tension even greater, like the strong man who leverages a hammer towards his face by holding the very end of the handle. I considered discussing underhand power cleans and Yates rows, making an argument that there are much more dangerous things being done in a typical gym setting every day. I also thought that maybe making a point about how the arms are incredibly strong in a static flexed position might be a good idea, and how this is the natural, instinctive way we shape our bodies when preparing for anything strenuous, like a wrestler who sets himself up in an athletic stance by flexing many of the joints in his body, storing up tension, but I realize none of that matters. The truth about this sandbag to shoulder lifting technique is that the biceps aren't really there to do the heavy lifting or or to absorb the weight of the incoming sandbag at all. Yes, your hand will wrap around the sandbag as you catch it to help guide it, and there will be some small amount of force transferred onto the biceps because of this, but the majority of that force is actually absorbed by the entire body. The elbow is flexed, the arm is in an underhand position, but the sandbag actually lands at a point that's above the elbow joint, directly onto the bicep itself. The only way the bicep would be in danger is if you somehow manage to catch a sandbag in your hand or on your forearm, forcing the bicep to prevent movement at the elbow joint, but that just wouldn't work. Sandbags are bulky, and trying to catch one like that, it would just fall back to the ground. Anyone new to this sandbag to shoulder lifting style should spend some time practicing with lighter weights to master the form. Done wrong, there is always that risk of injury, but when done correctly, it's much less of a concern than you might assume at first glance. 3. The final response. This is cool, I want to try it myself. Let's get into it. 
Begin by lifting a sandbag from the ground and placing it in a horizontal position on your lap. From there, drape both of your arms over top as far as you're able with a double overhand grip. Initiate the next part of the movement by reaching your hips back like a spring storing up energy, then violently extend with everything you have. Imagining as you do, your intention is to simultaneously jump into the air and throw the sandbag up and over your head. As the sandbag reaches max height, reach one of your arms underneath and catch it with an over-under grip. From here, continue moving the sandbag up towards the shoulder on the side of your underhand arm, rotating it as you do. With every heave, your intention should remain, jump and throw. It's a simple movement, but it will take some practice to master. Now let's go over why I think it's possibly the best shouldering technique there is. Keep in mind that most of what I have to say is about the end game. A lot of this stuff won't apply until you're already pretty advanced, and it may be years before any of this really matters. You can use many of these ideas straight away, but they probably won't have as big an impact with lighter weights. Even so, there aren't many videos talking about shouldering truly heavy sandbags, and I think we're all capable of making it much further along this path than we might allow ourselves to believe. So hopefully this will be useful to you, if not at first, then maybe somewhere down the line. A horizontal position on the lap will always be easier to get to than a vertical position. It's a simple matter of gravity. Regardless of how you choose to lift a sandbag from the ground, regardless of where the sandbag ends up after you lift it, you can always move it to a horizontal position on the lap if needed with relative ease. The same cannot be said for moving a sandbag to a vertical position. It takes considerably more effort to move a sandbag from a horizontal position on the lap to a vertical one than it does the other way around. To explain why this is important, and to make my case for the horizontal lap position being optimal in the long run, let me briefly go over each of the three main lifting styles from the ground. Lifting from a horizontal position on the ground is straightforward, and at first glance probably seems like the obvious choice when the goal is bringing a sandbag to a horizontal position on the lap. Just lift the sandbag straight up from the ground to your lap, and you're set. But what if you can't lift the sandbag off the ground from that position? For many lifters, the horizontal lift from the ground is significantly more difficult than the other techniques. As you get stronger, the sandbags you lift get longer, which means a wider grip and a more bent over torso angle. It's like deadlifting a barbell with a standard shoulder width grip versus using a snatch grip. The snatch grip will always be harder. Because of this problem with difficulty scaling, the stronger you get, the more difficult the exercise becomes, it's very likely your strength from the lap to the shoulder will eventually outpace your ability to lift a sandbag from a horizontal position on the ground up to your lap. Moving on to the second lifting position from the ground, lying vertically, if you're strong enough, all you need to do is lift the sandbag to your lap, then push it over. In a perfect world, that would be all there is to it, but I would argue this technique has a problem with difficulty scaling as well. As you become stronger, again, the sandbags you lift become longer, and using this lifting technique, the sandbag will have a tendency to run into your body on the way up. The only way to overcome this is by either moving the sandbag further out in front of you, dramatically increasing the strength requirement, or by trying to kind of shimmy the thing up once you reach the halfway mark, which in my experience is a very difficult thing to do. And best case scenario, even if you do manage it, it will leave you worn out, taken away from the rest of the shoulder attempt. That leads us finally to the lift from the ground to the lap with a sandbag starting in an upright standing position. Unlike the previous two, this technique uses the increased length of heavier sandbags to its advantage. The longer a sandbag is, the taller it will stand, meaning you won't need to bend over as far to lift it, which means a lower strength requirement. If you have the strength to lift the sandbag all the way up from the ground to the lap in one continuous motion, again, all you'll need to do is push it over from that vertical position to a horizontal one, letting gravity do the work for you, and you'll be good to go. This will work up to a certain point, but there's more to it. The trick is, as you become very advanced with the sandbag to shoulder, there will come a point where your strength from the lap to the shoulder will outpace even this most advantageous lifting position from the ground. Eventually, you will most likely need to alter your technique one final time. Unless you happen to be one of the few who is uncommonly strong off the ground, the only realistic way to lap a very heavy sandbag will be to decrease the range of motion by leveraging it against one leg and moving it 
it to a horizontal position on your lap. It won't be easy, you'll have to fight pretty hard for it, but at a certain point, this becomes the only viable way forward. For many, it's the only way to even attempt shouldering very heavy weights. This means lifting from a horizontal lap position sets you up for success in the future, where more likely than not, a horizontal lap position will be mandatory, because the leveraging technique is your only option for lapping truly heavy sandbags. Next, let's move on to why lifting from the lap in a horizontal position is more powerful anyway. Remember back to what I said about this lifting technique. You should initiate the movement by reaching your hips back, storing up energy like a spring, then extending with everything you have, thinking jump and throw. Now, while you can do this with a sandbag in a vertical position using a bear hug grip, at a certain point, once you reach your hips far enough back, the sandbag will begin falling away from you, forcing you to focus more on keeping hold of it and less on being as explosive as you can. With a sandbag resting horizontally on your lap, however, you're able to easily, maximally load your hips and then extend with every ounce of power you have without fear of losing hold of it. Now add to that the double overhand grip. This grip makes it very easy to throw the sandbag and allows it to naturally roll up your body following the path of least resistance. A neutral grip or an over-under grip can work for this too, but they often lead to an over-reliance on the arms, which can hold you back. With the double overhand grip, the arms are simply there to guide the power generated by your lower body without getting in the way. Following this train of thought, you can see why a horizontal double overhand position will let you bring a sandbag higher up on your chest than any other. This is the key element to this lifting style for one simple reason. The higher you can bring a sandbag, bag from that powerful starting position on the lap, the less distance you'll have to travel later on when the sandbag is in a less powerful position on your chest. When a sandbag is on your lap, you can rely on the entire lower body for power. You can make full use of the ankles, knees, and hips to generate force. When the sandbag is on your chest, however, you have to rely mainly on the knees and ankles, as you can't bend much, if at all, at the hips, or the sandbag would fall forward, setting you off balance. The higher you can lift a sandbag from your lap, the the more likely you are to shoulder it. A horizontal double overhand starting position lets you bring the sandbag higher than any other. Now let's look at moving a sandbag from the upper chest to the shoulder. This is another huge component to what makes this particular lifting style so powerful. When lifting a sandbag straight up from a vertical position, you must rely entirely on the strength of your body to move the weight. Either you have the raw brute strength to do it, or you don't. When moving a sandbag from a horizontal position though, you can make use of rotation to lower the strength requirement. Think about it, with a sandbag horizontal on your upper chest, your goal is essentially to rotate one side of it up to the shoulder, rather than trying to move the entire thing. This takes more skill and precision, but means you don't need to be nearly as strong to do it. Add all of these things together, and you have yourself an extremely powerful lifting technique. To recap. 1. It's easier to get to a horizontal position on the lap than a vertical one, and for many lifters, this position will eventually become mandatory once the standing, upright, leveraging technique from the ground becomes the only realistic way to lap a sandbag. 2. The double overhand grip is very powerful, and with it, you're able to make full use of the potential for power you have when lifting a sandbag from the lap, meaning you'll have less work to do later on when your potential for power isn't nearly as high. 3. Rotating the sandbag to the shoulder, rather than moving the entire thing up in a straight line, lowers the strength requirement and lets you push further than you otherwise could by adding an extra skill component to the movement. And that's all I have for why I think this technique has the potential to be the best there is. I hope you'll try it out. If you're interested in the sandbag to shoulder and want to learn more about how it fits into a complete training routine, I just released a book and training program called Sandbag Hypertrophy, the Complete Sandbag Training Manual. It's currently for sale over on Amazon if you'd like to check it out. I'll have it linked in the description below. In the book, I go over everything you could ever need to know about training with sandbags, from technique and exercise placement in a program to theory and the sandbag lifting mindset. I also made a 25 minute video detailing one of the two complete programs from the book. I'll have it linked below as well. A quick thank you to everyone who already got the book. 
Hearing how much you enjoyed it has really motivated me to keep working on these videos. I'm fired up and there is much more on the way. Also, thanks to those of you who left a review over on Amazon. That helps me out immensely. If you got the book and haven't already, letting me know what you think over there is a great way to continue supporting the channel. And I appreciate it more than I can say. Good luck on your quest to shoulder heavy sandbags. Thanks for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.